Hello everyone. So I haven't done any screencast tutorials in a little while and I thought I would do a, a really brief one today. I'm working with an IR captured uh, image, uh, meaning a, an image that I captured with an IR converted uh, camera. Uh, in the case of this one, it was with a uh, Nikon D200 that had a super color IR filter uh, in it from LifePixel. So uh, with the super color IR uh, conversion, you get uh, you get some more color channels than, or some more color information, I should say, uh, than you would get with even a standard IR or something like a deep black and white uh, IR converted camera. Uh, but what happens when you shoot with a camera like that is uh, your skies, uh, when it's white balanced, uh, kind of look like what you're seeing on my screen here. You get a, uh, uh, the foliage becomes uh, blue green and the skies become kind of a burnt orange. And uh, typically when you're going to start working, if you want to go with a completely alien landscape sort of look, that may work for you. And I have done that in cases, but in a lot of cases, you're going to want to actually have your sky look like a blue sky. Uh, and fortunately with Photoshop, it's fairly simple to, to correct that. Uh, all you're going to do is uh, swap the red and blue channels. Now, uh, if you're an active uh, IR shooter and you, and you do it quite a bit, there are Photoshop actions out there that you can uh, download uh, and it will do this with a click of a button for you. But even if you don't have one of those actions, it's a fairly simple process to swap red and blue channels. And frankly, and actually you could do it in just any type of photography, it isn't limited to just IR, but it is something that's a very valuable tool in IR. So in order to do it, um, I have the image open here in Photoshop CC. And whenever I'm working on an image in Photoshop, I always like to create a copy of my base layer as the first thing I do. So I'll simply just grab the base layer, drag it down into the new layer, and it's gonna create a background copy of it for me. So from here, if I screw anything up, it doesn't matter. My uh, initial base layer is still intact and hasn't been touched, uh, so I haven't broken anything. So from here, I'm just simply going to open a channel mixer layer uh, by clicking on channel mixer, and it's gonna bring up the control panel for uh, the channel mixer, and it's gonna default to wherever you were last time, so you can uh, tweak this as you need. But uh, in the channel mixer control panel, you have uh, the ability to work on each color channel, red, green, and blue individually. And since I want to swap the red and blue channels, I'm not going to be touching the green at all. I'm only going to make edits to the red and blue channel. Since I have blue already up here in my drop dropdown, uh, you'll notice that my red and green are both at 0% and my blue is at 100%, meaning that that channel is only blue information. So to, to swap them, I just simply take my blue and make it zero and take my red and make it 100. So all I've done is in the, in the blue channel, just inverted those settings. But I need to do it to my red channel as well since I want to do both red and blue channels. So I select red and I'm going to make red zero and I'm going to make blue 100. So once that comes up, you'll notice that my uh, sky is now a at least a bluish, greenish uh, sort of color as opposed to the uh, burnt orange. And now my um, trees and the foliage here, and this is actually, for those who don't know, it's shot from uh, the Astoria, Oregon area, and that's the Megler Bridge down over the river. Um, looks, at least I have some colors now to work with. So I can go in and do some hue and saturation uh, adjustments to make that sky, you know, more more natural looking blue. Uh, basically, I can do anything I want uh, with this image from this point. So um, I hope you found this useful, especially if you're an IR shooter and you're not doing this already, or if you're new to infrared photography, um, or if you want to uh, tweak the color channels in your more traditional photography, uh, you can do that this way as well. So uh, again, I hope you found it useful. Stay tuned. Uh, I hope to get some of these screencasts up on a little more frequent basis. We'll talk to you soon.